Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's webinar, which is learn how much and what kind of cardio will burn stubborn body fat in under five days. And as always, I have our most recent transformation uh, photos, and it shows the and basically in two to three month intervals what Alyssa did over I think it was about a nine or ten or nine or ten month period, and. Everything I'm teaching tonight, you will was used was used by and implemented by all the people who you see in the video slideshows, and I have like I think four other women other than Alyssa in the upcoming slides. So everything we discuss tonight, they used, they carried out the this protocol, this methodology. So uh, if we can get it going here, so. First up, first question, what type of cardio? Do I do treadmill? Do I do jogging outside? Do I do sprints? Do I do H-I-I-I-I-I-T? Do I do spinning class? Do I do Zumba class? Do I run for five minutes? Do I run for 30 minutes? What do I do? And I get asked that a lot. That was asked, uh, I mean, a, a number of times um, in the post I made on my on my actual uh, Facebook page when I asked a question about the webinar. Next I get asked, well, when to do it? So do I do it early morning? Do I do it fasted state? Do I do it before breakfast, after breakfast? Do I do it after work? Do I do it after I lift weights? Do I do it before I lift weights? There's people that, and we've seen it all over the internet, that people do every which way. We've seen it. We've seen and we've seen people that look good. We've seen some hot, physically fit, lean, athletic, gorgeous, I mean, perfect body, muscular fit women that do it before they lift or after they lift. But what's really the best way? And another qu quick point I want to interrupt and make here is that every single photo you see, the first one was Alyssa, and this one right here is Tracy, is people that, that they're a different somatotype. And I don't want to get off topic, but real quick, based on your somatotype, that will dictate to some extent how you do, how, how you'll develop and strategically implement the tools of cardiovascular exercise. Now, with that being said, at the end of the day, what you learn and what I discuss on this webinar doesn't matter what somatotype you are. Just do what I teach on this webinar and you're going to get 95, 90% of it right. If, does that make sense? So if you're tuning in tonight and you're just a prospective client, that's awesome. We want you here. The goal tonight is to educate you and to, to give you something to take away. So that when you leave here tonight, you learn something new. That, that's the whole point of doing this. Is to, 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 so when you leave tonight, you can say, hey, I didn't know that, now I do. And it makes sense. So we're going to explain when to do it. When does this do it? What type? When to do it? Next, we're going to explain why the timing is important. So I'm going to tell you when to do it, and I'm going to tell you why it's important to do it then. And I'm going to tell you when not to do it, when definitely not to do it. And when I tell you when not to do it, I'll explain why not to do it at a certain time. Okay? And then I'll explain what type is best. Should we do distance running? Should we do brief, short, metabolic? burpees? Should we do spinning class? Should we do treadmill? Should we do Stairmaster? I'm going to explain which type is best and I'm going to explain why it is best. So what type should you do? What type of cardiovascular activity should you do? Assuming leanness is your goal. Now, before we have 20 people jump in and say, oh, I want to build muscle, that's what I mean. That's part of it. You can get leaner you can burn body fat and still make incremental strength gains, especially if you're deconditioned and out of shape. Can you get super ripped and build muscle? If you haven't lifted, you, 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 you could, but that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about people that want to come in, build muscle tone, increase strength, make strength gains, and get leaner. Okay? And, that, and even if, like me, I'm not trying to get leaner. I'm lean enough. But I still do some type of cardiovascular metabolic activity twice a week. But I do it for general health purposes, to promote nutrient uptake um, and just, just for balance. 
So I'm going to still abide by these rules. So don't let that, assuming leanness is your goal, throw you off. The point is, is that even with that being said, 90% of the you, you guys out there want to stay lean or get leaner. I think it's safe to safe to assume that. So with that being said, this is Lucy, and she's someone that was, I think, on board for about nine months. And you can see in her tremendous change in her physique, and I'm going to explain why that's so significant. And she was already pretty fit. I mean, she's had three kids in her mid-40s here. And you can see here, much more muscle, but still a lower body fat. And I'm going to use her as a better example as we move down the slide here. So what type should you do? Well, that depends on what you're currently doing. Now, somebody once said a quote, and the quote is this. The best program is the one you are not on. Now, let me explain what that means before you lose your mind. All that means is that you need change. You need to shift what you're doing. If you've been pulling the sled, for those of you that might have access to a sled, for the last four to six to eight weeks, do something different for the next four to six to eight weeks. If you've just been jogging on the treadmill, do something else. Even if what you've been doing turns out to be effective when I go through the webinar, still, now you say, well, I do it every week but I do other stuff too, that, that's still get away from it for a four to six week block. Even if what you're doing turns out to be okay when you when I do the webinar, it probably won't be. But the point is most women that are on this call tonight that struggle with long duration cardio, it might be running, outdoors, it might be treadmill, it might be a body pump class, an hour of class, it might be an hour spinning class, it might be Stairmaster for an hour. You guys know what I'm talking about. They're in the gym every elliptical for 30 minutes. Lucy here, she loved, she would run like 20, 25 miles a week. Look at her body. So what we did is we told, we switched her, she was on it, customized eating. Of course she was, okay. But we, but we also switched her training. And look at the difference it made in her physique, in her figure. So but we see this at the gym every day, women and some men, but mostly women just walking or jogging endlessly on the treadmill. And second of all, so you want to switch what you're doing if it's not working, okay? Second of all, you want to find and transition to and implement ground-based activities. What does that mean? What does ground it mean? Something with a stable surface. It could be a basketball court. It could be your front yard. It could be just the floor or the ground. That's all it means, okay? Well, like, well, why is that important? And I'll tell you why. A treadmill is not ground-based. A Stairmaster is not ground-based. A spinning class bike is not ground-based. A recumbent bike is not ground-based. When you're ground-based and you're on the floor and you jump or you sprint or you do a mountain climber or you do a burpee or you do a frogger, you have to dig into the ground and push off, whether it be your hands or probably your feet. You have to dig in and push off. Oh, what difference does that make? Well, I'll explain in a second. I'm going to explain that. When you dig into a surface and push off the surface, it recruits more muscle fibers. And it creates, because it creates, because it recruits more muscle fibers, it creates a greater metabolic disturbance. Now, time out. I know what you're saying. I can run on that treadmill and my heart's going to be throbbing, my legs will be tired, and I'll be pouring sweat. I didn't say you wouldn't, but you're not going to recruit the same muscle fiber recruitment. You're not going to elicit and provoke and stimulate that type of muscle fiber recruitment on a treadmill or on a Stairmaster, because on a treadmill or Stairmaster, you can't dig into the machine. The machine moves underneath your feet. Does that make sense? The treadmill moves underneath you. You can't really dig into it at all. On a Stairmaster, you can kind of push off some, but the, the steps are already moving. So you have to have a stable surface when you push off. You're like, well, if we want to recruit muscle fibers, and I'm, I'm playing the devil's advocate here because I know you guys are, somebody's thinking this, so why don't you just lift more weights? Because when you lift weights, you're using an external load. We don't want to have an external load here. And when you lift weights, because you have that external loading it's, and it's a significant load, you can't necessarily move very fast or jump fast with it. So I'm just playing devil's advocate, but to stick to the point here, 
That's what you want to do. That's what's so profoundly important because when you see these people run on the treadmill, and Lucy's a great example. Look, look, and diet had something to do with it, but her training did too. Her legs are more muscular here, but they're smaller. Her legs shrunk. They shrunk, but she added muscle. So she quit running and decreased her body fat, but, but built muscle in the legs, but they're still smaller because she burned off the fat because we changed the drills she did and the exercises she did. And if it'll work for a 40-something-year-old mom with, with three kids, there's no telling what it'd do for someone younger that never even had kids. So a third thing that, that you should do is you never exceed the number, and let me, never in this circumstance. When I say never, I mean someone that's just in general. There, there are a few brief exceptions to the rule, which I'll get into, but just, just for now, never exceed the number of lifting days. And I think we got cut off here. But what I'm saying is that your, your, your cardio days should never exceed the number of lifting days. For example, if you do two days a week metabolic cardio work and three days a week of, of, of weightlifting. I don't ever have ever suggest anybody does more than three weightlifting days a week. If you need to, you're overtraining. Could it happen? Could it be done? Sure, it could be done. It could be worked in. But why would you want to do four days a week? So I, I think three days a week weightlifting is the I don't care if you're off-season, you're just a general fitness enthusiast, or if you're preparing for a bikini figure fitness show. Three days a week is plenty. And so my point is, is that if you're doing three days a week, then and you do two days a week for your metabolic cardio, which I'm going to give some examples of in a little bit, that's all you need. That's five days, if my math is correct, two plus three is five, so that's still two extra days of the week that you're not even going to be doing anything that you can use to, uh, I, say, I say not do anything, that you can dedicate to school, to your kids, to your family, to your husband, to shopping, to, 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 to whatever, or cleaning, well, whatever it is you've got to do. And we're going to get to that more later. But this is a starting point. I see these women in the gym that can't even, don't even look like the exercise on, on the treadmill every day, six days a week. Spinning class. I've seen them go from the spinning class to the Stairmaster. Then do H-H-I-I-I-I-T on the Stairmaster after spinning class. It doesn't even look like the exercise. Two days a week is all you need, folks. And wait, wait till I keep going here. And each session, each cardio session, should be 6 to 18 minutes in duration. That's it. After you warm up, 6 minutes should be the shortest and 18 minutes should be the longest. You're like that, well, you can't burn fat in six minutes. Want to bet? You can stimulate fat loss. And if your diet's on point, your nutrition's plugged in, and you spark and ignite your metabolism and create that metabolic disturbance synergistically with everything else at will. Let's keep rolling, and we're going to touch on this more now. When is the best time? When's the best time? When's the best time? Never after you lift weights. After you lift... You want to start the recovery process as fast as possible. And cardio prolongs it. If you don't understand that, let me know now and I'll explain it more. But I'm going to say it, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, I'm, I'm going to explain it anyway. When you finish working out, when you finish a training session, your body's beat up, it's depleted. You want to take a nap. Drink a shake, eat a food meal, or whatever your, your, your deal is. You want to start the recovery process. What you don't want to do is keep exercising. But, but, but I, know some, I do too. I know some hot girls, some buff guys that do that. That doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's best. We've all seen people that can do nothing and look, that can do almost nothing and look good. Agreed? We've all seen guys and girls that can look hot be ripped, be lean, be muscular, and barely doing it. We, we, we've seen people like that. There's people like that. Okay? So to say somebody does something wrong or doesn't do much of anything or, or does this and they look good, that's not a legitimate excuse. That's not a, that's not a, in an intellectual discourse, that doesn't hold any weight. That doesn't hold any water. So just because good-looking, hot, buff people do it doesn't mean it's the right way to do it or that you should do it. Now, I didn't list this up here. I, I forgot, and I should have done it. But I'm going to mention now what I should have said, never, never, never before you lift weights either. 
So don't do your cardio metabolic stuff before you lift weights. You can warm up, but a warm up isn't a 10 minute jog on the treadmill. Or you shouldn't even do the treadmill before you lift weights. You know, anyway. But I've seen, there's, there's someone on Facebook. I should have put her photo up here. Um, and she's, girl's freaking hot. Awesome body. And she, girl's getting, she's really, she's like early 20s. And she makes, she gets stronger every week. I mean, she posts her numbers. And let me emphasize, beautiful body and lean and fit. And she does like a 15-minute treadmill jog before she lifts weights. Upper body or lower body. And it's wrong. It, it's not going to kill her. But it's detracting from when you, when you exercise, when you do a cardiovascular movement, especially the treadmill, before you train. And 15 minutes is, that's a good, that's about a, I don't know, one and a half, two mile run, you know, if you're jogging. Then what you're doing is you're depleting your richest energy source. And you're like, well, why can't I warm up? You can warm up. You shouldn't warm up. on Even if you did a three-minute walk on the treadmill, that's a crummy warm-up anyway. That's not going to help you lift weights. That's not going to improve mobility. That's not going to stimulate your nervous system. But that's not necessarily the point. It could be tread, It could be Stairmaster. It could be bike. But, I mean, the point is, is that this person I'm referring to does a 15-minute uh, uh, relaxed pace jog. You know, a mile and a half, you know, mile and three-quarter jog before she trains legs or any body part. And she can get away with it because she's young and got pretty good genetics. And, and she eats, you know, doesn't eat that good. But the moral of the story is, is that don't you do it. And I don't want to turn this into a pre, pre-workout pre video because I already have one or webinar because I already did one on that, on how to warm up properly um, and why not to do cardio before you lift. So I'll keep moving with this. But never before or after you lift. Never immediately before or immediately after you lift. Now, let's keep moving. Okay, simple. Do your cardio on days you don't lift. If you're lifting three days a week, do it on a day you don't. And I just said before, six to 18 minutes is all you need if you do it right and you pick the right movements. Now, so many people think they have to do both at the gym, and I, I don't know why. I guess because other people do it or they read. I know why. They read, they read these competitors' Facebook pages or some hot little sassy girls like, ooh, 45 minutes on the treadmill after weights, uh, Olympia, here I come. And the, you little, these little foppish girls see that and, ooh, I got to do it too. Well, that girl's on all sorts of drugs and pretty good genetics, and it, it, it doesn't justify it doing things wrong. But speaking about competitors, that we're going we're gonna to touch on that, if I can get caught up here. And that's why I got, that would be one, that would be one situation that we're about to touch on in just a second. Now, I say mid, I say morning or midday is best to do your, your cardio, and I'm going to explain why. I didn't say first thing in the morning. I didn't say fasted state. I didn't say before breakfast. I didn't say that. But if you do it in the morning hours, or in the midday hours, or you know, you're going to stimulate your cardiovascular system, which is going to boost your metabolism. You're going to create a, meta a metabolic disturbance if you do what I've described so far. We're not talking about a treadmill here. We're talking about what I've described so far and what I'll continue to fill you in on. That's what we're talking about. Then you've all heard, well, well doing, doing it first or early, or early in the day, the first half of the day, it speeds up your metabolism for the day. There's truth to that. And I'll repeat it again. If you do it earlier in the day, it will speed up your metabolism more throughout the course of the day otherwise otherwise than doing it in the afternoon or evening now if you have to get off work and go in and warm up into your metabolic for 15 minutes or 10 minutes at home when you get home from work that's fine or at the gym if you want that's fine all i'm saying is that i do actually believe morning i didn't say once again i didn't say first thing before breakfast fast at state i didn't say that what i said is that in the first half of the day if you do it it will contribute to a more revved up metabolic performance over the course of the day. And you will burn more calories over the course of the day. Doesn't mean you still can't be successful if your schedule only allows it in the evening. I'm just making a point here because I know some of you guys are going to, you only hear what you want to hear. Now, all right, what if you're, a, what I'm a competitor, I have a figure show, I have a bikini show. What do I do? I'm a, I'm a competitor. Well, we have little Franny, and I put her photos up here. This is when she signed up with me. 
let me think. Um, February of last year, okay? This was uh, probably, I don't know, several months later, and this is, I think, like three days before her show. So you literally see how her body changed. And in the course of a contest prep protocol, you can, there will be some days when you will do double sessions. One session might be weights, one session might be metabolic. One session, and you might have some days where both sessions are metabolic. Okay? And when I say metabolic, I'm going to define that more in a minute. When I say metabolic, just, just think cardio for now. Okay? So, double days or early mornings should only be done. When I say early morning, what I mean is before your first meal. Okay? A lot of women would love to hop up empty stomach. I didn't say empty stomach. I said before your first meal. That's what I mean when I say early a.m. So double days or before your first meal should only be done if preparing for a competition or a photo shoot. And the double days should only be done at the back end. What does the back end mean? Here's what it means. The minimum time, the minimum, absolute minimum I've ever seen anyone prep for a competition is 16 weeks. So half of 16 is 8 weeks. So weeks one through eight, your first eight weeks, you don't need to do double. And you really don't, you don't need to do it before your first meal. But your last eight weeks, for most people, is when you would start. I see these girls like 20 weeks out or 16 weeks out, even 12 weeks out, they're doing double days twice a day every day of the week. Taking three fat burners a day. Where do you go from there? Three days a week? I'm sorry, three, three sessions a day, four sessions a day, five thermos a day. So the, I hope you see my point with that, is that you want to slowly transition in. And I want to make one more point on this. For these folks that I have do that, I'm going to say that for the next, for the next slide, because I got that coming up next. Um, okay, now, if, you, if there is a day where you do a metabolic and a weightlifting on the same day, or there is a day where you do two metabolics, two cardios the same day. Always have two meals in between your two sessions. At least two meals. You might want to have four if your schedule permits, or even five. But at least two. That way it gives enough time for uh, glycogen replenishment, uh, nourish, nourish, nourishment replenishment, nutrient replenishment, and adequate recovery so you can come back and perform well on your second one um, I got a bunch more points I want to make on this but Franny did great she did phenomenal she finished second place in two different figure shows so we're very very on or in, in state level shows and she did phenomenal so we want to give her a big props for that so thank you Franny for being a good example for us here and showing these ladies how it's done so moving on and by the way she was only 26 and she was a, a full-time nurse, by the way. Worked from 5 a.m., uh, was at work at 5.30 and got off at 3.30. So she had to get up at 3.30 or 4.30 some days, you know, to, to get her sessions in. Anyway, so let me talk about, now this is my definition of metabolic training. Okay, metabolic by, denif, by definition, metabolic just means metabolism. Metabolic refers to metabolism. All metabolism is... Your metabolism is the rate at which your body burns calories. And when you exercise, what happens? You speed up your metabolism, temporarily at least, you know. And when you speed up your metabolism, you burn more calories. You have a greater energy expenditure, okay? So I like the word metabolic more than just cardio. So from now on out, I'm going to use metabolic instead of cardio for the rest of this webinar to make my point. And I might plug in cardio if, if you forget or if I have to do something, but my point is, is that that's the term I use for the upcoming specific type of drills that I'm gonna, that I have my folks do that are, that are vastly superior to traditional Stairmaster, HIIT, treadmill, so on and so forth, or, or distance running. 
So that's my definition of metabolic. The other part of the definition, or the complete def, to complete the definition, I refer to metabolic drills as being ground-based, as being stuff you can do in place. You don't need a track. You can use a track, but you don't need it necessarily. It's stuff you can do in a three by three square foot space on your floor, at the gym, wherever. We're going to touch more on that as we go, but let's keep rolling here for now. I don't want to get too on topic. So a good ratio I like to use is a 25% uh, time should be, whatever your recovery is, basically 15 seconds of an aggressive effort doing drills and then a 60 second recovery. Let me repeat that or let me reword that. Let me word that differently. 15 seconds is 25%. It's a fourth. It's a quarter of 60, right? Okay. So 15 is one fourth of 60. So you could do um, two minutes and bump this up to 30, but a good, a good benchmark whether it's H-I-I-I-A-T or it's doing the ground-based metabolic drills, which I'll go over, is to do 15 seconds of an aggressive effort of the drills, of the exercises, and then recover for 60 seconds. Recover doesn't mean lay on the ground and collapse. Recover doesn't mean walk at a fast pace around the gym. No. Recover means just, just stay in there and catch your breath. Okay? 15 seconds aggressive effort, 60 seconds recovery. Remember that. Like I said, as long as this is one-fourth, the effort is one-fourth of the recovery, you're going to be pretty good. If you do like a, a, a basically a two-minute recovery but a 30-second effort, you could try that, or you, could, you can adjust these times accordingly. As long as this is one-fourth, and this is, as long as the effort is one-fourth of the recovery. You, you guys understand what I'm saying. But this is a very effective I like this time frame the most. I like this this ratio, this this time breakdown the most. So use that when structuring them. Uh oh, backwards. Okay. And we already touched on this. When you do this, you will have a more profound afterburn or caloric expenditure afterward. You're like when you get off that tra after a three mile jog down the street in your neighborhood, you finish. Are you out of breath? Not really. You're tired. Your legs are a little fatigued, but you're not gasping for air after a three-mile jog. After you finish one of your metabolic rounds, your legs are going to be burning. Your upper body might be burning too. Your the muscles and all all the muscles in your legs will burn, and your lungs will be gasping for air. You'll do it for a shorter amount of time than you would for a long three-mile jog, but you'll have a greater metabolic payload. And you'll burn, even though you're doing it for a shorter amount of time, you're going to recruit and stimulate a much greater disturbance. And it's, it's now here, this is a potentially a potential downside. When you do, and I'm not a fan of, of HIIT necessarily, but there's a place for it. But when you do the metabolic training, which I'll go over more, or HIIT or any kind of sprints, it is more taxing on the central nervous system. Uh, a three-mile jog is not. You know, long-duration cardio, that's not taxing at all in the central nervous system. So you can't do this every single day chronically. Once again, if it's managed correctly, you can do it in a pre-contest prep protocol or pre-photo shoot. You can, but once again, that's acutely. That's not chronically. Acute means a brief, short time frame. It's a condensed time frame. Chronic means ongoing, long time. You can't do... There, there's women out there, and it's amazing, that are doing spinning class, then doing H-I-I-I-I-T for 30 minutes on the Stairmaster, then going and lifting weights, then coming back the next day and jogging on the treadmill. I mean, there's people that abuse themselves so badly, and they don't even look like the exercise. Let's keep rolling here. And if, to touch on that nervous system point again, if you overtrain the nervous system, you're going to suffer, it's going to accelerate the overtraining process. And uh, you've heard about, 
you've heard the term metabolic damage, it can accelerate metabolic damage and it can also have adrenal fatigue and cortisol release. So you, you got to know how to manage this properly. Um, now, this is probably the biggest key indicator benefit of this ground-based metabolic training, which I'll give you an example of in a minute. It integrates your hip, glute, and hamstring recruitment. And that's why, if I, I've got, you know, contest, pre I mean, this, our, our next photo here, this is JJ. And she did a show, and this is like a week or two out from her show, so she was pretty ripped. And you saw Franny, and you'll see another girl in a minute. They all, we only do legs one day a week. A lot of girls like to do legs, you know, legs Monday, upper body Tuesday, you know, Wednesday, legs again, Thursday, like chest and, and shoulder, then back Friday, then then legs the third day on Saturday, and then rest Sunday, and then do cardio after each one. You don't need to do, we only, even even for contest prep, my folks, only legs one day a week. Now, when I say legs, I'm not, I mean, you know, we, we, we kill it now. We don't do a zillion sets and reps, but, you know, we, we pick about three exercises, and we, we do an aggressive effort. But the point I'm making is that you're getting so much recruitment and stimulus from the other Heck, if it's contest prep, basically four or five days a week from doing the drills, or even just a general, you know, a general client, you're still doing it two to three other days a week, the metabolic drills. So you're getting that stimulus and that recruitment even when you're not lifting weights. You're going to recruit the hamstring. You're going to tap in to the gluteus medius, to the AB ductor group, to the A, A, B, A, D ductor group, whichever one I said. Um, the bicep femoris, which is a muscle in the hamstring, you're going to tap into muscles you're not going to normally necessarily tap into and recruit when you're doing stairmaster, treadmill jog, jog outside, or, or what have you. So therefore, you get that payload. Um, okay, I hate the word muscle tone, but muscle tonus is actually that's like the textbook term. All here, here, let me let me let me but muscle tone or the textbook word tonus, all that means is a partial, a state of partial muscular contraction. A, 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 a state of partial muscular contraction, a flex, a twitch. That's all the definition means, okay? But in common conversation descriptive parlance that people use, Oh, you look so toned. Ooh, girl, I love your body, you're toned. Or he has good muscle tone. What they mean is that when you, like if you flex a muscle and you flex, you can see your muscles more, right? Okay. If you flex a muscle, you're creating muscle tonus to your bicep, flex your sh shoulders, your chest, your abs, or whatever it is you're flexing, you'll see those muscles more, right? Okay. Because that by, that's the textbook meaning of muscle tone, just to kind of clear that up. So when someone says you look toned, all they mean is you're lean and they can see your muscles better because you're lean. That, that's what they mean. When, some, that when a girl says, I want, I want to look toned or he is toned, that, that's all they mean. In the context I'm using it here, I kind of mean the same thing. But when you recruit through these ground-based metabolic drills, what will happen is by recruiting these high threshold motor units and musculature that isn't normally worked in, in sustained long duration cardio in a relaxed state without flexing if you do flex it'll be even more so but even in a relaxed state sure you'll be a little bit leaner sure you will be but even beside the fact you're leaner you'll still look more toned you'll have more of a recruited contracted toned Flexed, hardened sounds kind of off, but you'll have a more myogenically toned look to you performing these as opposed to the 30-minute the cardio sessions, the hour-long jogs, the three-mile jogs. I mean, you saw Lucy in about three slides ago. You saw she went from a jogger, and yes, she was leaner. Sure, she ate differently, but we, we cut the running out. We slashed her cardio by 90%. Okay, and it all works together. As you do different types of these metabolic drills every day of the week, with that weight training, it's a synergistic metabolite, excuse me, metabolism, metabolic boost. And it all works together. Now, I'm going to pause, and I had 
I promised Mandy I'd answer her question. I'm going to get a sip of water here real quick. So her question was, and I promised her on Facebook I'd answer this. And I've, and I've probably already answered it. Well, I know probably about it. I definitely already answered it previously on the last few slides. In fact, you guys watch and know. She basically asks, when prepping for figure competition, how much cardio should you do, how often, and when is the best time? And is it okay to do 30 minutes of cardio after weight training? Well, you got, I mean, I've already answered that. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to expand on this even more. Okay? I'm going to go into even more depth on the next slide. Because a lot of these girls, a lot of women out there that do these bikini figure shows, they, they don't have a clue what to do. Okay? And you obviously have to push the envelope further than a woman that just wants general fitness, that just wants to drop three dress sizes or lose four inches off her waist. And, you know, but if you want to break under 15% body fat and really get aggressive, you, you've got to, it's a different ball game. So let me focus on this and I'm going to, I'm going to answer this. Well, I've already answered this and I think you guys would agree. And by the way, type in any questions you have and I'll, I'll get to them in about five or six minutes when I wrap the slideshow up. But with that being said, my first question to Mandy is this. And I've prepped dozens of girls for shows, pro shows, national level shows, local shows, seasoned vets, newbies, beginners, moms, I mean, you name it. But here's my question for Mandy. Mandy, do you have a coach or a trainer? And you can think about that for a minute or you can be quiet or you can type it in in the chat bar and I'll, I'll we'll get to that shortly but it, it, here's my answer to you if you do if you have someone that you're working with then you should have total faith trust and confidence in them you shouldn't be on my page coming to me for to overstep their boundary does that make sense now if, if you don't that's a different ballgame. If you don't have a trainer you're working with, then you shouldn't be doing a show. You really shouldn't be. It's not worth it. You don't know what to do. You're going you're gonna to get off. You're going to screw up, and it's going to be very frustrating, and it's going to be self-defeating. Okay, now, let's pretend you do. I don't know if you do or not yet, but let's pre just pretend you do. Then, if you don't have total trust in your trainer that's preparing you for a show, then you should either, number one, quit. You should. You should quit. Or, your second option is you should find someone you do have total trust in. Am I off base? I mean, give me, give me a, Jeff, I feel you on this. Type in, anybody. Jeff, it makes sense. Brother, brother, you're keeping it real up here. Type in, let me know. Tell me, let me know. Keep it real. I mean, this is commonsensical. This is common sense. I can't, and, and here's why, here's, I, 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 I don't even really work with competitors anymore, to be honest with you, you know, but I hate to see people, you, you can't, you can't put your heart and your soul into something you don't trust. You can't give your best effort if you don't have confidence in it. You can't. If you're hesitant, you can't give your best effort. You can't. That's enough on that. Let's move on. Now. Let me get into the nuts and bolts here. This is our a, a phenomenal girl that did a competition last year. Her name's Candace. A lot of you guys probably remember her. And she lost, good heavens, like God, probably 60 pounds of fat. She's a little girl. She's only like five foot two. She's tiny, little bitty thing. But she has she's on thyroid medications, Hashimoto's. Uh, and she had a, a video on my Facebook page where we talked about her thyroid. She's on thyroid medication. But even with that, we were still able to get her down to sub-15% body fat. Which is a testament to her, number one, her discipline, and number two, following the right map, having a, a, a designed program. So let's talk about this for a minute. I'm going to go over some of the stuff we did with her, but I also want to... Now, she was advanced, but when she started off, she was beginner, but there was a point when she was intermediate. 
probably months, I don't know, months four through six, she was intermediate. Okay, and she was, she took her about a year to prep for her show, by the way. Or not a year, probably nine months. But that's a different story. So I'm going to write out for you guys an intermediate, multi-pronged attack for a seven-day week. Not a three-day, but a seven-day week. And I integrated the metabolic. So, number one, you have weightlifting. Let's just say day one is weights. Now, let me pause here. Before I go any further, let me say this. For those of you that are already signed up with me and are watching this webinar, that are already on board, you've already signed up, you already got your eating program, and I've plugged you into one of my published articles, or published programs, rather, or a customized program. It doesn't matter. The point is, do what I've coached you to do. Don't deviate and try to plug other stuff in from this video. This webinar slideshow is to provide a general, effective, well-designed template with key information for prospective clients to educate them on how to do the right type of cardio at the right times for effective fat loss. And this will set them up, okay? So once again, I have, to, I have to tell folks twice, girls, they'll get screwy on me. If you're already signed up with me and you're watching this, and I, I love my clients to come on here, that's awesome, but don't, don't, don't do this, do what you're doing. Okay, just have to make that clear. <laughs> Some people need double and triple confirmations. And that's okay, that's why we're here. So day one is weights. Day two, day two, the drills I would say are frogger, split squat jump, and whiteouts. Now, if you don't know what these are, march right over to my YouTube channel and I've got all these videos up. They are all up there, di video demos of other girls doing these. You march your little taters right over there. They're all up there. Now, you're saying, well, how many reps do I do? How long? I just went over that. I just went over in my last slides how much recovery, how much aggressive effort to do, what ratio, what times. I've already told you how long your session should last. Agreed? I've already said all that. So I, I want you to put your little thinking cap on and you be a critical thinker and use your creative learning skills and do it yourself. I'm, going, I'm giving you all the raw materials. I'm bringing the puzzle pieces. And I'm not talking about some 10,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. It's like in preschool you have like three big shapes and anybody over the age of three months can probably put them together without any effort. That's all I'm doing for you guys. I'm giving you the, the stuff. You just I'm giving you three or four puzzle pieces. Not a thousand. You just got to put them together. But I'm going to make you think a little bit. You'll thank me for it. But th So if you do the frogger, do the jump, do the split squat, and do the wide outs on day two. Day three, that would be a weightlifting day. Day four, super burpee, alternating froggers and toadies. Plug in the variables that I've already listed. Plug in the recovery periods, the time, the effort periods, the, the, the duration of the sessions. Five, day five would be a weightlifting day. Day six, single leg burpee and jump rope. And day seven would be an arrest day or totally off day. Now, if you have any questions, type them in the chat bar, and in a second I'm going to minimize the screen, or the slideshow rather, and I'll be able to read them and I'll answer them. So while you're thinking of questions, let me say this, if you have, if you don't know where these are, once again, go to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is called Figure Athletes, it's not Wet Wolf, um, and it's if you go to my website, you can find it. I mean, my, my YouTube channel the YouTube or go to my um, I had to take YouTube off my Facebook for some reason but um, go and register on my message board or you know what go post and do this first and by the way everybody should do this when you finish and I'm gonna remind you in a minute when the webinar ends in about you know 15 20 minutes from now after I answer the questions if you don't mind if you would please go to my Facebook page and under the post where I just posted the webinar link about, you know, I don't know, 45 minutes ago for this webinar, in the comment section, just post what you thought of the webinar. Hey, I liked it, and tell me why you liked it. And if you didn't like it, you can tell me that. 
but be honest and tell me why you didn't like it. Or say, you know, I, I like this, but I didn't like that, or I agree with this, and it makes sense. And I am, and if you might even have another question, which I'll still answer, but and if you, your line is unmuted, we should be here. I hope you guys can hear me. But anyway, in a minute, do that. So I'm going to minimize the screen. I'm going to minimize it. Don't panic. I'm not cutting the webinar off. Everyone should be good. Everyone should be good. Okay. Someone said I lost my mic a minute ago. I, hopefully, we're good to go. Okay, I think it sounds like we're back on track. Um, hopefully you guys didn't miss too much. Uh, hopefully you guys didn't miss too much of the uh, recording. That's not good. Anyway, I think we're good now. So let me, let me look at the questions here. Let me see what all we got. So everybody says, makes sense, so true, you're keeping it real, you're keeping it real, lost your mic. Um, bear with me, guys. This my computer's being screwy, so just just bear with me. Um, no audio, so we're back on now. It sounds good now. Anyway, are there any more questions? I'm looking for I'm looking at the chat bar here for for questions. I don't I don't see any questions. Ask any questions if you got any. Now's the time. Now's the time. Does that make sense? Does that understand the challenges you face? That you see so many women on here that come on, and I see it on Facebook too, and they'll say, can I do cardio here? Should I do, what I'm doing 30 minutes after I lift weights. I'm doing it first thing in the morning, empty stomach. Um, and they say that. And it's very, uh, it, it's very disheartening to hear that because I, I, I tell people in my videos and I give examples on my YouTube channel of how to do it when to do it. And I just gave you great examples here. So Amanda says, great, thanks. Kristen says, uh, she's good. Okay, now, I got a good question here. Um, hold on. Okay, Rebecca says, is cardio warm-up recommended or necessary on a lifting day? And, well, you should always warm up, Rebecca. You should always do a whether you're doing okay, whether you're doing a metabolic session or you're doing a weightlifting session. Either way, you should always do. You should always do a mobility warm up. And I have a video, Rebecca, that is I posted and I tell you exact. I have a, I have a previous webinar. I have a previous webinar on my YouTube channel where I tell you exactly what to do for a warm-up, whether it's weightlifting or whether it's uh, before a metabolic, before a, a, a metabolic um, session. So, um, so there. Let me let's see the next question. Uh, does that does that answer your question, Rebecca? I hope it does. If it doesn't, let me know again. All right, Amanda K is asking, what about programs like CrossFit with their own agenda, where to go from there, been CrossFit in the year? Guys, Amanda, if you, let me ask you a question about this. And I, I hate questions like this because I have to wonder, were you listening to a thing I said? But let me, before I, before I bust your chops, let me ask you a fair question, Amanda. So answer it. Now, my question is this. What are your goals from doing CrossFit? What are your goals from doing CrossFit? And I'll I'll answer the rest of your question when you answer that. Why are you? What are your goals? Okay. While we're while she's answering, while Amanda's answering that, I'm going to look down here and Fran says, uh, "Quick recap of your last slide. We had no audio. Okay, I'll go back and do that last slide. I will do it in a minute." Um, Oh, Delinda, welcome aboard. She's here. Uh, Delinda says, uh, where is your YouTube channel? Delinda, and Delinda just signed up, actually, so she's new on board. Delinda, what you need to do is, in the getting started email I sent you, if you click on the, if you click on the, uh, the link in the getting started email, it'll take you to my message boards, my pro boards forum. And that's where you're supposed to start your journal. And I also linked to you the, the 
ex the published program that I want you to follow, the published exercise program I wanted you to follow the first month. And when you find that article on my message form, and you don't even have to find it, you just follow the link that I put that I plugged in the email. You, you're going to have my YouTube channel. My U I have videos all in the all in the exercise article in the workout program that I want you to follow, which is a very simple program, very brief program. I have the demo videos all in the article. Does that make sense? And I'll even send you an email. I'm going to heck. I'll just I'm saying that on the webinar just to clear it up so others can hear it. But I mean, you're already on board, so I'll I'll, I'll do this. Go when you start your journal. Go start your journal tonight, and I'll, I'll, I'll send you my, my YouTube channel in there. That's the best way to do it. We want, and this goes for all, all clients, current clients, we want you active, or we want you plugged into the, your personal journal on my pro boards message board forum. Number one, because email isn't always reliable. And if you post in your journal, I'm going to see it no matter what. So that's kind of a hub, it's a crossroads, it's a, it's a mecca, it's a meeting point that I'll always get your message no matter what. Because email's messed up sometimes and you have spam folders, even if, you know, but... So to clear that up, let's keep going here. Rebecca says, yes, now, I think it was Amanda, I asked Amanda what her goals were for CrossFit. And I'll answer her question. And guys, thanks for your patience. This is my computer, the, the reception or the connection is awful here. And... I have to also say that, um, okay, okay, Amanda says get leaner. Um, Amanda K, thank you for that answer, and I have to tell you, you're doing the worst thing possible. If you want, and did you ask me that on my Facebook page? Someone else did. If you want to get leaner, run from CrossFit. Turn and flee. CrossFit is not a workout routine. CrossFit is a sport. CrossFit is a sport. CrossFit is a sport. People, the goal of CrossFit is to get you better at doing CrossFit. If you want to get more fit, do you go play football? No. If you want to get more fit, do you go play golf? Well, no. How about basketball? No. Now, you might initially burn a little bit of fat or build your work capacity. But CrossFit, you don't do CrossFit to get fit. You do that. CrossFit is a sport you do to compete in and prepare you for the CrossFit Games. But, 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 there's a local box. I, I understand that. But your local box is never going to admit that. They're, gonna, they're using CrossFit as a tool to get people fit, to burn fat, to do weight loss. They're marketing it as a tool to get that done. Otherwise, they'd go out of business. The fringe demographic could never support the CrossFit boxes. So, Amanda, you shouldn't be, if your goal is to get leaner, Candace. Remember Candace, the photo of her on the last slide? She was about to do CrossFit before she signed up with me. She said, thank God I found you. Uh, that was, she said, CrossFit was my last hope. That was my last, chan my last chance to get really lean. And thank God she didn't or she would have been injured and beat up. CrossFit is a sport. It's not a means to get in shape. Do you have any other questions about that, Amanda? Amanda, if you want to get leaner, here's what you should do. Number one, you should first and foremost put all your focus on a customized eating program. Preparing your meals for the next day, every day of the week. Number two, do an effective mobility exercise, or excuse me, warm-up routine. And the thirdly, do a brief Brief, brief, brief training sessions. Three weights a week, two metabolics a week. Do you have any more questions about that, Amanda? Does that make crystal clear sense to you? If it doesn't, ask a question and I'll explain further. Okay. Uh, Delinda says, okay, thanks. And Delinda says she started a journal. Delinda, as soon as webinar's over, I am immediately going to go uh, and, and, and plug it in your journal. So good job there. Um, and Amanda says, thank you, that was a great explanation. I feel like I've been lost on what to eat, so I appreciate it. You're very welcome, Amanda. You're very welcome, and that's okay that you asked that. That's why we want you here. We want to, the, the webinars, this is an education-first webinar. There is a tremendous amount of misinformation out there. You know that, I know that. Uh, well, you guys are learning that. 
And we've got people here all the way from Korea. I know Anna's on here. Anna, Anna's on Anna from Korea. She's on here. And uh, Anna, you're welcome to type in if you want what you learned today. I'd love to hear what you what you learned. Anna's a, a foodie from from uh, from South Korea, so we're glad she's here. But we have a lot of folks here from around the globe that, you know, almost every woman has some interest in fitness. They, they love going to the, the, hot, the hot fitness girls, bikini girls, Facebook pages, reading their status updates. Those, just because a girl has a hot fit, has a six pack or, or hot legs, a hot butt, whatever, doesn't mean she even knows what she's doing. And I know it's hard because you see that and you think, well, how could they not? They're hot. Well, we've already been over that. Okay. Francis wanted me to redo the last slide real quick. Was it, did it, did it, did the mute go, did it, did it mute right at the start of the last slide? Or was it, did we, t was it just the last slide? Or is it part of the previous one? And anybody can type in. It doesn't have to be Francis or Fran. Anybody can type in. Amanda says, okay, after day two. Okay. I'll go back on, um, but honestly, if you can read, if you can read it, it should be okay, but I'll, I'll bring it back up. Let me bring it back up here for you guys. We're still on screen share, so I'll bring it back up. And I'll just pick up with day two. So let me, let me, so day two. So day three would be a weightlifting day. Day four would be your super burpees, alternating froggers and toadies. Day five is weightlifting. And day six is single leg burpee and jump rope. Now let me say this. I've I already mentioned this earlier. I'll re-mention it again. I've already told you the the aggressive effort, the effort period, and the recovery period. I've already told you the you know the amount of time it should be. Okay, so you need to put your thinking cap on, be a critical thinker, and think and use your creative learning skills, and you develop the the exact number of each exercise you do. You, you figure out how many, you might need to pull out a calculator and use the variables I gave you. Does anybody not remember that? It's very simple. I'm not very good at math and even I can figure it out. But I want you to be creative and use the parameters I gave. And I gave six to 18 minutes in that. It's your job to periodize that and incrementally adjust that. And it's, and also I gave, um, I said 15 second effort to 16 second recovery. So 25, it should be a 25, uh, it should be a one fourth ratio, if that makes sense, if I'm, if I'm wording that correctly. So it's your job to put that together. And I do this because I want you guys to build confidence by putting your thinking cap on and, and doing it. And let me say this, here's one more key nugget. Every, week one, and you would only do this for four weeks. Week one, by the time you get to week four, you should be doing something. You should be add. You should be incrementally adding to this each week. So you might want to. You might only want to do this for six or seven minutes week one, and add two minutes, or add an extra rep per each exercise, or add an extra set. As long as it fits in the parameters I just gave. Does anybody have any questions about that? Does anybody have any questions about anything? related to the webinar about their own sessions. Um, I think, was it Laura or Laura Corvette? I, I might get her name wrong or right. She, she had a bunch of questions and she had a great comment. I don't know if she's on the webinar or not. I told her to register. And she had an awesome comment on my Facebook page recently. Um, does anybody have any more questions about anything? Remember, if you would please, if you would please, there's no charge for these webinars, but I always ask that as a courtesy, if you don't mind, tell me that you, if you like the webinar, tell me what you liked about it on my Facebook page under the webinar link I posted in the comment section. Or if you d d disagree or don't like something, also tell me that too. I mean, you can tell me that. You're welcome to. Um, Amanda Kay says, what about sustainability or is that just for competition? Amanda, what do you mean by sustainability? Be very, be very, Amanda, can I bring you on live? Can I activate your microphone? May I do that? Because I think if you come on live, you can ask more questions and we can cover more ground. And I think by doing that, it'll build confidence.
for some other women and say, okay, I, I understand what Amanda's saying. So if you like, let me know. Okay, sure, awesome. We'll bring Amanda on. And I appreciate that. Let me, let me bring Amanda on here, and uh, we'll bring her on live. And hopefully it works. We'll give it a minute. And anyone else is welcome to come on too. Uh, is that Amanda? All right, let's, let's bring Amanda on here. All right, Amanda, you should be ready to go any second now. Hello. Hello there. Thanks for joining us tonight, Amanda. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. So, tell us. Ask exactly what your question is, and I'll I'll definitely answer it. All right. I'm not training for a competition of any sort, so I was wondering if the the week plan that you suggested with the incrementally increasing is that just for when you're training for something, or is that something you can do? sustainably to create a leaner, healthier lifestyle? Good question. The answer to that is yes. That is for the general populace. That is for someone that has been doing the treadmill at the gym every day, someone that's been doing the HIIIT Stairmaster. You know the people I'm talking about. That's someone that's already into fitness but isn't burning fat, that can't see progress. That's not for the couch potato that's deconditioned. Now, to answer the other part of your question, is that, yes, that's how you should train. I think two days a week, I tell, I have my people that sign up with me, whether they're, you know, way off the deep end or whether they're just, you know, just moderately out of shape. I want two metabolic days a week, and I, I put them on a published program and three very brief total body lifting days a week. So... I did give you the one that I had a demonstration of and, and get a format of and a template of, which you just saw, that was three metabolic days a week. And it was three weightlifting days. So, yes, that's, that'd be good, f and that is sustainable. And even if you're not doing a competition, you can still do that indefinitely. Now, what I recommend is that, especially for my people, my clients, but for anybody, that every four weeks, every month, you change your routine. And when you change your routine, you want to switch up all the exercises. You want to change up every drill. And you might even drop it down to two metabolic days for the next month. You know? You know and, and, and what I also do is, after about the third or fourth month, I'll even have some of my folks do, might even let them walk on the treadmill at a, like a really steep incline for like 18 minutes, hands off the rails, and that'll be one of their metabolic days. And the other day might, you know, will be the jump rope froggers, whatever it is. And another day we might do sprints. So to, so to answer your question, I, I think both parts would be yes. Yes and yes it is. You can do that forever. Now, when you incrementally build up and add an extra rep, an extra set each week for that one month block, okay? So the next three weeks, you'd add a few extra reps, maybe an extra set, so that your tiny incremental progressions for the next, what, week two, week three, week four. Then on the next month, when you redesign it and have new exercises, you don't want to pick up where you left off. You want to drop back down to that six-minute starting point. You want to drop back down. And you're like, well, I'll go backwards. No, you won't, because you're switching your exercises up. You can't keep building month to month to month. On t you can't keep compounding your exercise volume. I know you didn't ask that question. I don't think you did. But you can't keep... But that's a, no, but that's exactly what I meant. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I, I figured that. Thanks for following up and great job confirming. Ex you can't build off... Although, okay, and, and I'm just playing devil's advocate. Where do you go from there? All, you're going to be doing 45 minutes, then it's, then it's an hour and a half. I mean, what's your goal? To work out three and a half hours a day? Then what? Five hours? I mean, it's just you, you can't keep compounding. What You've got to, you can drop back down. What I call that is reverse deconditioning. We're going to drop back down. We, I have girls that will be going six days a week, doubles, at five weeks out. And then when they renew for the last four weeks of that contest prep, we drop them down to three days a week doubles for week four. Or, or, or not week four, four weeks out from the show. Then at three weeks out, or four, then five, if I'm, I'm talking way too fast. But my point is, is that you can do strategic deconditioning every single month, and it won't set you back 
if you switch the exercises up accordingly. Great, thank you. Absolutely. Do you have any more questions at all? I think that took care of my questions. I've been doing an hour and a half of CrossFit three to four days a week and not really noticing any difference. So that was very helpful for me. Lord, have mercy. Bless your heart. Well, I'm glad you <laughs> came on. And and I know I just said it, so I don't want to beat you up. But cross and, I'm, and, and talking voice to voice in real time helps. And, and I want everybody to listen in. And I get questions about CrossFit every almost every webinar. I did a very polarizing YouTube video two or three years ago on CrossFit. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw it, but it had like 76,000 views, and I actually put it on private. Just got too much trolls from it. But the point is, is that here, here's the problem with CrossFit. CrossFit is a sport. We've all seen the CrossFit games. They do, they do the, it's not live, but they do the reruns on ESPN5 at like 10 p.m. at night or on a Sunday afternoon when nobody's, you know, so they put it on like, you know, <laughs> on the non-prime time slots. But the point I'm making is that what they do is that people see that, ooh, and, and they glamorize it. Ooh, I want to go to and CrossFit's trendy. The Navy SEALs do it. The Marines do it. Cheerleaders do it. NFL players do it. Well, if any NFL player does it, it ain't because he's in the NFL. <laughs> That's not the reason he's in the NFL, because of CrossFit. So people, it's glamorized by the fitness community and... Tremendously. Well, CrossFit's a sport. And the whole point of doing CrossFit, you know, CrossFit boxes, CrossFit training, is to prepare you for the CrossFit competitions, the CrossFit games. So when you do it as a tool, and I've already repeated this, but I'm just reemphasizing it because I got you on the call. When you do it as a means to get leaner and build muscle tone, so on and so forth, You've seen the problems. What you develop is called, you, not only do you overtrain, but you develop a type of metabolic damage. And number two, you become exercise resistant or fat loss resistant. If you run a mile, and I haven't, I haven't let me just, I'm going to ramble on for three hours if I don't cut it off. Do this, do this, Amanda. And you might have read this article. And this article is on my website. You don't have to register for my message board. The article is called, Running Makes You Fat. It's on my website. So just go to my website. You don't have to register for anything. Just go to my website and click on the article. It's on the, just scroll down. It's got a, like, a, uh, like a photo of some guy running down the road, uh, like a jogger. Read that and... <laughs> And that'll explain, in a nutshell, what the compounding volume, what you're referring to. Yep, been there, read oh, that. Oh, you, you've uh, read it. I just wasn't sure if it only pertained to running. Okay, you, well, yeah, and you can well, you can plug in CrossFit, you can plug in Stairmaster, you can plug in you can plug in any exercise. I think running's the most addictive. Gotcha. People love CrossFit, and if you're at a local box, you'll you'll probably acknowledge this. People love CrossFit because it makes your muscles burn like crazy. And you bust your ass. And you work your ass yep. off. Crossfitters work their ass off. They're not lazy. They're anything but lazy. But we'd rather have someone that has, remember, you'll never see a sunset running east, no matter how hard you run. You gotta run west. If you're running in the wrong direction, you'll never achieve your goal, no matter how hard you run. You're busting your ass across it. We gotta uh, turn you in the other direction and get you in the right path and slow you down. And then all of a sudden, right. Thank you. You, you get those results. Thanks for coming on. Any more questions? Amanda, any more questions? Um, I'm all set. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, cool. Well, give us a shout out on the Facebook page if you don't mind. And is anybody else. Um, would like to come on. You're, anybody's welcome to. Uh, we appreciate Amanda coming on. Would anybody else like to come on and ask questions? And uh, Joanne said she's going to hop on the treadmill tonight. I, I don't think I, I don't think she has the guts to. Um, Anna said she won't come on. I'm not even going to bother with that. Uh, Delinda, would you like to come on? I know you just Delinda actually signed up yesterday, and Delinda, I don't want to brag on her too much, but she has. I mean. 
has an awesome figure. You know, I'm excited to work with her. She's got a ton of potential. Um, let me know if you want to come on. Uh, I got a funny bad reception here, so we'll give it one more last call. Uh, would anybody like to come on? One last call. Any any questions? We got a great thing going. So anybody's welcome. Uh, okay. Well, if you guys would stop by my Facebook page and just simply uh, give a shout out, tell me what you did like about it or didn't like, and one last call. Anybody want to come on? Now's your chance. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it, and uh, and have a good night. Bye-bye.